এই বলছি মৌটুসি আমাদের সুরেন্দু বন্ধু স্যার লিংক পেয়ে গেছেন তো কথাও হয়েছে ওনার সাথে অশোক বাবু কথা বলেছেন আমি তো মেসেজে কথা বলেছি আগে পূর্ণ করেছিলাম তারপরে একবার পনেরো বারোটার সময় করে জয়েন বুঝতে পেরেছি হ্যাঁ বুঝতে পেরেছি হ্যাঁ বলেছেন যে তুমি ফোন করো তারপর ভুলে যাবেন গন্ডগোল হয়ে যাবে হ্যালো
গুড মর্নিং প্রিন্সিপাল স্যার মর্নিং মর্নিং স্যার কেমন আছেন ভালো আছি তুমি কেমন আছো হ্যাঁ এই চলছে এই কালকেই তো বিয়া ঝামেলা সেই কেউ নি অনলাইন অফলাইন নিয়ে রাত্রি পৌনে 12টার সময় বাড়ি ফিরলাম ওরে বাপ কলেজ থেকে এই থেকে এই থেকে আসানসোল থেকে আসানসোল থেকে আচ্ছা ইউনিভার্সিটি থেকে ইউনিভার্সিটি হ্যাঁ ছেলেরা অবস্থান বিক্ষ মনসম কত রকম হচ্ছে পড়ছে হ্যাঁ এই কাগজে আজকে দেখলাম परीक्षा <laughs> समाधान सूत्र प्रैक्टिकल परीक्षा थियोरि परीक्षा डेफार्ट मंत्री संगे आलोचना समस्त कर प्रोग्राम कर चतुर्वेदी सर वेर इज प्रोफेसर मंडल इज प्रोफेसर मंडल शुद्ध Good morning everyone. We will wait for few more minutes for the other participant to join.
uh, actually we are waiting for professor shudhendu mondol
हेलो हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम नॉट गेटिंग साउंड नाउ हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम नॉट नॉट लिस्निंग द साउंड ओके स्पीकर साउंड आई एम नॉट गेटिंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग यू आर गेटिंग नाउ द साउंड Yes, now your sound I can listen. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, principal sir, should we start the meeting, the webinar? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, good morning and welcome everyone. One Virginia Mackin said that I cling to the beauty and the strength of nature. an all wild creature with a passion born of certainty that only through them can i retain my perspective about life and my own part in it welcome welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar my name is dr sandeepan ray and i am the assistant professor at department of botany durgapur government college under kaji nazrul university today we all gathered here to commemorate international day of biological diversity on 22nd may 2022 through one day national level webinar come photographic competition on to a sustainable development connecting lives to interaction and lenses jointly organized by department of botany department of conservation biology and department of zoology in collaboration with internal quality assurance cell of durgapur government college we have participants from different states of india like west bengal tripura Meghalaya, Orissa, Jharkhand, Assam, etc., and we welcome them all. We have also with us Dr. A. P. Das, the eminent botanist among us. Thank you, sir, for your presence. Now, this webinar has been divided into four main section. and to start with we will have an inaugural session followed by plenary session where to eloquent speaker professor shudhendu mondol ugc professor of botany department of botany vishwabharati and dr apurva ratan ghosh professor department of environmental science from the university of bardhaman will deliver their thoughts after that we will move to the photographic competition where our eminent judge dr shubhamay chokdar assistant professor department of computer science and engineering nit durgapur will going to announce the result and finally we will end the program with the valedictory session our intent is to spend most of the time to understand the need for the hour for a sustainable development where there is a place for every life form to thrive in through interaction and lenses now without further ado we will turn the time on and i want to request our honorable chief patron dr devnath palit principal durgapur government college to deliver the welcome address uh Good morning to you all. And thank you, Dr. Sandeepan Dev, for a very nice inaugural uh, your introductory session. So you have mentioned everything about the need of the hour, ethical uh, components, and sustainable development. Everything. So without much delay, uh, first of all, on behalf of the Durgapur Government College family, I like to um, welcome, heartily welcome to all the eminent business persons, uh, and then the participants from the different parts of the country. They are both uh, presenters from the photographic competitor of the photography session, mm. <coughs> and Dr. Robijit Mandal, coordinator of the IKC Gopu Government College, and Dr. Sapun Kumar Ghosh, Secretary of Digital Council, 
and the uh, entire organizing team i uh, would not mention the name of the each and every person uh, because we are lagging in more or less 20 minutes so anyway so i am uh, i have tried privilege uh, to uh, welcome uh, professor sudendu mondol uh, one of the stalwart botanist or you can say environmental biologist uh, so uh, and dr professor apurvathan ghosh mm -hmm. professor department of animal science in the university of bardon and i have um, really glad <laughs> to announce that uh, some stalwart botanist or environmental uh, biologist whatever you can say they are present with this webinar like professor epidas uh, and what i am today i have learned from my teachers my sincere gratitude heartfelt thanks and profound respect to all of you sir please take my pronoun in bengali what we call um, from the core of my heart and dear participants uh, without wasting time i'd like to say please uh, interact uh, with our eminent resource person during the interactive sessions and you will gather enormous information and enrich yourself uh, with this uh, particular this resource person and theirs and they will enlighten different aspects of the different domains of the term the biodiversity is a very vast term so they will cover different aspects and by their vast experience in their particular field of knowledge anyway so once again i thank you the entire organizing team department of botany conservation biology and geology in association with the iqac so i am sure uh, that this department will organize uh, some national and international seminar in physical mode in the coming days without wasting time once again my uh, sincere gratitude heartfelt thanks and respect to all the eminent resource person the uh, participants like some um, my teachers are there thank you very much thank you so much sir thank you thank you for your speech so now i want to request our honorable vice patron dr obhijit mondol coordinator iqac durgapur government college to kindly address the gathering thank you sandeepan <clears throat> am i audible to all of you yes sir you are audible perfectly okay. okay it gives me immense pleasure to present the honorable speech in this one day national level webinar come photographic competition on towards sustainable development connecting lives through interactions and lenses i would like to express my gratitude to our respected principal sir dr devnath palit and our teachers council secretary dr shapan kumar ghosh i am pleased to welcome everyone here in this webinar on behalf of the durgapur government college family it is at the same time an honor for me to become a part of this webinar a good very good morning to all of you we feel honored to have with us dr sudendu mondol uc professor department of botany vishwabharati and dr of purvaratan ghosh professor department of environmental science the university of bardwan as resource persons in this webinar we also have with us dr shubhamay chandragar assistant professor department of computer science and engineering nit durgapur as honorable judge for photography competition i want to convey my deepest sense of gratitude to them for accepting our invitation and giving their valuable time in this webinar i feel privileged to convey my thanks and regards specially to the departments of botany conservation biology and geology for organizing this web wonderful webinar and contest in collaboration with iqc durgapur i would also like to convey my gratitude to hods of all these departments and the whole team conveners organizing secretaries organizing committee who all are committed to this program to make it a success <coughs> i am thoroughly pleased to address the participants i welcome all the participants in this webinar the topic of this webinar is not only interesting but also the need of the hour sustainable development according to the layman's language sustainable development means we have to meet the needs of the present without compromising the needs of the future this webinar certainly enlightens everyone over here 
this webinar is basically organized to commemorate International Day of Biological Diversity. So today we certainly have a wonderful session and exciting competition ahead. So without consuming any time further, I should stop myself here. To conclude, I wish all the best for the success of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Your presence and wise word will certainly help us to magnify the thrust for a better world in the best possible way. Thank you, sir. Now, I humbly invite Dr. Shapan Kumar Ghosh, TCS, Durgapur Government College, to greet the gathering. Thank you, Sandeepan. Uh, am I audible, Sandeepan? Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay. Uh, a very good morning uh, to all uh, present in this particular auspicious event, uh, the webinar. Uh, already, uh, our principal sir uh, had said a lot of things uh, regarding the conference and uh, regarding the webinar, and also uh, Dr. Obhijit Mondol has said. Uh, many things uh, he has uh, already covered uh, many things uh, regarding the conference uh, but, uh, uh, i would like to say something about uh, our uh, first of all uh, our respected principal sir um, durgapur government college uh, our iqc coordinator dr obhijit mondol uh, our uh, respected speaker today's uh, keynote speaker professor uh, sudendu mondol and another speaker uh, dr apurva ghosh of Adon university uh, the faculty members, the head of the departments, botany, geology, and the uh, uh, other faculty members of Durgapur Government College, and the uh, young researchers and students from those who have joined this particular webinar. So uh, it's a very auspicious day in the sense that uh, whether it is a conference or webinar, whatever we call it, or seminar, actually um, this gives us a meeting place or meeting point. Uh, actually, it provides an opportunity it leads us to share the knowledge among the uh, scientists, among engineers, botanists, physicists, whatever research scholars, and working in every nook and corner uh, of India and abroad. And the object of any webinar is to bring together and highlight the recent developments and trends in various fields of science and technology. Basically, it also encourages uh, a webinar, whatever webinar uh, or seminar we call, whatever we call it, uh, it actually encourages the collaboration to increase the interdisciplinary research work. And basically, uh, the goal of any webinar or conference you know, is a, uh, it, it's a meeting uh, that are a cross fertilization of knowledge and ideas of different fields in this science. In spite of that, uh, this is scientific uh, benefit of a webinar, organizing a webinar or seminar. Uh, other than that, uh, there is a social impact also for holding such webinar in Durgapur Government College. Actually, Durgapur Government College is one of the leading colleges in the industrial region of Durgapur, Raniganj, Asansol, uh, in the entire industrial belt. And this meeting will be helpful to motivate the young students to carry out their research works uh, in the emerging fields. And the present meeting will help to develop future human resources also. In addition, uh, it helps the teachers and students of different colleges uh, for interacting, uh, including DGC, will be able to interact uh, with the resource persons. So actually, um, any uh, conference or any uh, webinar or seminar, whatever you call it, actually it gives us space uh, to uh, to uh, to cultivate the knowledge uh, to uh, uh, to encourage uh, the students uh, the young researchers uh, basically it helps uh, it it helps the young researchers basically because they are they are getting the opportunities to have the knowledge to share their knowledge to to uh, to, uh, to receive the uh, uh, expertise knowledge from the um, from the experts um, experienced persons in these fields in in this webinar and be, because those who are young teachers and also those doing researches in these fields whether it is science or technology or whatever it, it is botany or geology or conservation biology um, it, it actually uh, it actually helps the students to uh, the young uh, young faculties member 
uh, to to cultivate the knowledge actually um, it, uh, it 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 uh, whenever a teachers whenever a teachers teaches in the classes so he will be more confident uh, if if he if he uh, does the research work or continues his research work in the in, in the science because because whenever you are doing uh, you are taking the classes of msc i have seen many i have experienced many things uh, in this field that uh, when a teacher uh, when i in initiated uh, started to, to open the msc program in uh, durgapur government college physics so many of the existing faculty members opposes this because they have not done their phd work so they are less confident and that uh, to teach in msc classes so it gives you the confidence research doing research in these fields or whatever they are in uh, respective fields uh, it, it actually gives you the confidence uh, to teach in the higher classes or teach in the um, uh, in ug classes whatever and because of this i think i can recall one point of the tagore's um, um, tagore's opinion of, of education that when tagore initiated the school of uh, at santini katan patokhavan vishwavidyalay in 1901 and he believed that the teachers, the initiatives in the school, but the school teachers, he encouraged the teachers of the school that they will, the teachers of the school will do their research work in their respective fields because, uh, because, because any information or knowledge, uh, information, the students have uh, uh, enough to collect the uh, knowledge uh, or information. It's not their problem. It actually teaches, if the teachers uh, uh, do not, uh, uh, do not enlighten them, with the uh, current development or different trends in the knowledge in their respective fields. So he will not be able to teach the best, their best to the students. So research is uh, so important, inevitable in the teacher's uh, point of view. So um, I won't um, stage this discourse because already you are late. So um, the basic objective um, of the of the any webinar is, is, is that it, uh, it, 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 it helps to cultivate uh, the knowledge in this field and uh, one thing I must must uh, point out over here that um, that during the pandemic situation, so any I have had um, um, and all of you have had that any uh, uh, path or any road is if it is closed, so uh, a number of road is open newly. So so the pandemic situation and the organizing webinar of this sort of webinar is is proves that um, this here say that uh, that it, it's true. Uh, in, in, in any in any one path is not the ultimate. So. If one path is closed, so, so uh, many paths is opened up. So the so webinar uh, has proved that that you cannot. Uh, although although we have lost the opportunity to mingle in a when you organize a uh, conference uh, in offline mode, so uh, uh, we are missing that opportunity to mingle uh, with, with the research person, with other faculty members or young researchers uh, in, uh, in, uh, at, at, at the time of dinner or lunch or tea, tea, tea break. So we are missing that part, obviously, but still we are getting enough. So, so I will not uh, stage this, uh, this course. So I wish a great success uh, of, of today's webinar. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, sir. As your speech have enlightened us about the various aspects of life and development. Thank you, sir. Now, we will move to our next session. And just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any question during this plenary session, during the presentation, please type uh, them into the question box and we will bring them up after the presentation and we will have the time for questionnaire at the end. Uh, and please one request from our side, you please keep your microphone in a mute mode. Thank you. Now, I would like to request Dr. Ashok Bhattacharya, Head, Department of Botany, Durgapur Government College, to kindly introduce our first speaker for this webinar. Yes. Am I audible, Sandeepur? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes. Uh, thank you all. Good morning to everyone. Uh, here today now I am very much pleased to introduce my teacher and PhD supervisor, Professor Sudhendu Mandal. Uh, actually, I know the every details of my guru, Professor Mandal. Uh, Professor Sudhendu Mandal, uh, he actually completed BSc and MSc degree from Vishwabharati University securing first class first position in both the examination and he was the national scholar at that time. Professor Mondol 
the recipient of Indian Science Congress Association Young Scientist Award in 1982 and former director, National Library, Kolkata, Government of India. Now, he is the formerly UGC Professor of Botany and senior most professor of the Vishwabharati, Shantaniketan. Professor Mondol served as the Pro Vice Chancellor of the University, Sikom Skills University, securing first class first position in BSc Honours and MSc Botany from the Vishwabharati. He received PhD Science degree from the University of Calcutta in 1980 and has been awarded Commonwealth Academic Staff Fellowship in 1991 to 1992 at the UK. He has above 37 years of the teaching at PG level, 42 years of the research and 23 years of the administrative experience as various capacities. Professor Mondol has successfully supervised 35 PhD students for their PhD degree in the field of plant biodiversity, systematic palynology, aerobiology, allergy, detection of the aeroallergens and biochemical analysis of the allergenic pollen, ethnobotany, pollination biology and environmental botany. Professor Mondol visited a number of the research institutions and the universities in countries like Germany, USA, Bangladesh, UK, both England and Scotland, Canada, Yugoslavia, Sweden, France, Japan, Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, Nepal, China, Mexico, Russia, and in many other countries. Okay, uh, he has completed 23 research projects funded by the different funding agencies like CSIR, BSI, UGC, DOEN, DST, IGCNI, MNES, DBT, and Vishwabharati. Professor Mondol has also to his credit more than 275 research papers published in national and international journals and is the author or the poet, co-author or the editor of the 20 different books including one very famous book, Tagore and Fowler, CSI publications. This is very rare book. So Professor Mondol has been honored with the prestigious award Millennium Scientist Medal at the 96th Indian Science Congress Association at the Northeastern Hill University, Nehu, Shillong, in 2009 by the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh, in view of his significant and lifetime contribution to the development of the science and technology in the area of the plant sciences. He has received Professor E.P. Odam Gold Medal from the International Association for the Ecological Communication in 2009, Professor S.C. Dr. Memorial Award from the Botanical Survey of India of Bengal, and the University of the Calcutta in 2014, the Legend of the Science Award at the World Science Congress at the uh, Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia Hospital, New Delhi in 2015, and also the Paul Johannes Brühl Gold Medal from the Asiatic Society, Kolkata in 2016, Ministry of Culture, Government of India. Professor Mondol was the President, Indian Neurobiological Society during 2003 to 2007, working as the president, natural disaster management cell, Vishwabharati, and presently, uh, and at that time he was the vice president, plant physiology forum, presently he is the vice president of the plant physiology forum, secretary, Indian Science News Association, treasurer, West Bengal Academy of the Science and Technology, and advisor, uh, or the expert member of the IIAS, IHS, UGC, DST, Intribnet, DBT, and many other uh, organizations at the national and the international levels. Previously, Professor Mondol served Bibal Sahani Institute of the Paleobotany Lucknow as the scientist and lecturer in botany at the postgraduate department of the botany at Darjeeling Government College for four years during 1980-84. During his work period at the National Library, Professor Mondol received VVIPs like Honorable Presidents of the India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, Honorable Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh, Honorable Speaker Sri Somnath Chatterjee, Honorable Minister of the External Affairs Sri Purnam Mukherjee, Honorable Ministers of the Culture Sri Joypal Reddy and Simoti Ambika Soni, Honorable Governors of the West Bengal Sri Biranjay Sa and Sri Gopal Krishna Gandhi and Honorable Chief Minister of the West Bengal Sri Buddha Dev Bhattacharya and many other state ministers and the senior government officers. All of them praised about the activities and functioning of the National Library under the leadership of the Professor Sudhendu Mondol. In addition to his normal academic activities, Professor Mondol also served as the Vishwabharati as Uddhokko, Dean, Faculty of the Science, Vishwabharati, Dean of the Students' Welfare, Head of the Department of the Botany, when I was the student, 
professor in charge and coordinator, center for the environmental studies, provost of the science and agriculture, finance officer, internal audit officer, register acting on the many occasions, professor in charge, engineering section, engineering section, chairman, Vishwabharati admission coordination cell, chairman of the research committee, chairman of the university innovation club, head integrated science of the education and the research center, head department of the biotechnology, professor in charge, research publication section, director Indira Gandhi center for the national integration and director Gonthun Vibhag Vishwabharati Kolkata. So these are the few only about the achievements and the academic pursuits and most uh, administrative capabilities of the professional Mongol. Many other things, uh, I think that I could not have much time. I don't have much time to uh, uh, mention everything, but uh, I uh, I am very glad to say uh, only about a few of the achievements of the professional Mondol and my teacher and the supervisor. And now we are very much uh, lucky today now here uh, to listen something from such a great and eminent persons. Uh, as such, the young generations can be motivated and they can get some uh, enthusiastic uh, enthusiasm from the professor Mondol. And my teacher, he is not only now today's uh, program in the Durgapur Government College, uh, so far I know he is associated with the Durgapur Government College, he has been associated since 1978. So uh, it is very, very much uh, uh, glad for all of us uh, that Professor Mondol is present over here and he will share his experience and he will encourage to all of us to do something uh, better in the near future. Thank you all and uh, I'm very much thankful and on behalf of the Department of the uh, Botany, I express my gratitude to all of you. Thank you all. Now I request to Professor uh, Mondol, my teacher, uh, to start his uh, lecture on the particular topic entitled Biodiversity for Food Security and Sustainable Development. Thank you, sir, for uh, present over here and we are very glad to have you, sir. Thank you very much. So the point shop phone I got sir? Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Okay, 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 okay. So now Uh, sir, Hello. Your mic is on mute, sir. Oh, yes, sir. No, it is on. It's on. Oh, Professor, yes, sir. Do, okay. Okay. Professor Sudendu, yes, congratulations. Is it listening? I am Swami Chatterjee from Bordhman. I am Swami Chatterjee from Bordhman. Yes, 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 congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, thank you. So, is it audible? Yes, yes. Yes, Hello. Uh, yes sir, audible. Audible, sir. Okay, okay. First of all, I would like to express my most sincere thanks and gratitude to the respected principal, Durgapur Government College, Dr. Devnath Pali, and his band of academic team who are holding this webinar today. Basically, the Department of Faculty members, the Department of Botany, Geology, and Conservation Biology, as well as all the members of the college who are helping in the activities of the college. As I said, I had a long association with this college since 1978. As I know, and you will be happy to know that Durgapur Government College was once upon a time for the Department of Geology because Bordon University was not having a postgraduate Department of Geology. Durgapur Government College had and I came with the then stalwart geologist, Professor Ajit Shah, head of the Department of Presidency College, to visit the Durgapur Government College and Purulia and Durgapur area in connection with the ESG project on environmental pollution. I worked with Professor Shah for a shorter period of six months on the DST project in the environmental pollution. And that was my first visit to Durgapur Government College, Purulia, Jalla, and adjoining areas. So I have a long association, number one. And number two, you'll be happy to know that my son-in-law, Dr. Kapan Kumar Ghosh, who is there teaching in, as a teaching faculty. And number three, one of my direct students, Dr. Ashok Bhattacharya, 
who is now heading the department of botany durgapur government college and i will be very happy to know, to inform you that ashok did the first time subrata and ashok did first time in the eastern india to work on pollination biology no one did it in the eastern india including professor arun sharma professor shubhas jatta professor sunimal chandra first time we started this line of work at vishwavarathi and ashok did the quality some quality publication and he visited also usa and japan as well and totally uh, i am happy that the government college is graded as nat and you will have to know that who was the chairman of nat grade professor s p rath from odisha who was the vice chancellor of north odisha state university to whom i have selected as a professor in college university when professor rath went to gao the only professor sir in gopur i said that what for you are here like came for this as a chairman of the team for nat and see carefully and do it whatever you like and i said that some my colleagues and including them but i know him personally for his start work so i told there are some quality persons you should see correctly and judge accordingly and before going to leave durgapur he told me sir I yeah, did the conversation, but I told you we have given A. So that's a satisfaction for a teacher like me with all these conversations. So I congratulate Dr. Devendra Pali for really working as the principal and guiding all of the faculty members in the academic activities of the college. And I feel happy and I feel proud and I'm delighted that you have invited me at this stage to say a few words. the internal biocd academic now i start with my slide just a minute hold on just one second i'm taking so do your voice you is breaking yes sometimes your voice is breaking actually oh you're not audible we are audible but uh, in in between your voice is breaking in between oh is it yeah okay okay i'll see. so now i will talk on the biology for food security and sustainable development that is my topic 
Okay, is it clear? Uh, sir, your yeah. Right now, your voice is clear, but the slide is not visible now. Slide not guess, visible. No, is anyone can view his slides? No, it is not yes. visible. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, it's not visible. It, it's it's still it's loading. Visible. Slide is still loading, I guess. Loading. I taking time to load the slide in computer. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Light is not visible. Now, now. No, sir. No, still it is not coming. No. Sir. Actually, it is writing that PowerPoint is opening DGC International Biodiversity. Oh, the slide yes, is not yes, open yes, yes, now, yes. right now. It is not open, it's sir. Opening. I think that it will take some time. Okay. Yeah, it's taking. To it. open. It's still loading, sir. Loading, loading. So is it visible now? No, no it sir. is not. No, no sir. sir. Now it has not. Uh, till now it has not been opened. It has not been. Okay, okay. Not actually. Clear. Actually, the computer yeah, is. Clear. You actually, sir, your yeah. computer is taking I some time to open the slide. Uh, computer is taking some time to open the slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just. Uh, Sorry to the revenge at this been getting late. No sir exactly. Now is no, it sir, clear? No is it no sir? Huh? No voice is clear sir. No sir. Voice is, is clear. clear. Sir okay. Yes sir voice is totally clear. Yes sir. Yes sir. Now but slide slide. Slide. Is there is a slide button? Sir present. No 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 sir slide slide does sir open korte hobe slide, slide presentation ta hocche na ekhono. मैंने देखते दिन सर अपना पेशन है डीजीसी इंटरनेशनल ओपन है क्लिक कर लो चले आज भी हाँ अपन पेशन है जब लिखा था सर ऐसे ओपन ना एक बार क्लिक कर दीन ताले चले आज भी
sir has left the meeting i think he will rejoin again some technical glitches is happening with his computer i will request everyone to bear with us so we will take few more minutes for the okay no issue sir professor mondal to join again Yes, sir. Now it is seen. Yes, it is. It is visible now. It is. It is seen, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Now it is visible. Now you okay. can just share it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then Abar to le lo the samne ta. Huh? Abar sir, samne ta the chole aslo. Yes, sir. Chilo. Sir, apni. Abar point ta click kulon. anyway So this is the government of West Bengal, Durgapur Government College, and today is the International Day for Biological Diversity, which is being celebrated globally. And I will speak today on the biodiversity for food security and sustainable development. As you know, International Day for it's an occasion to increase the global understanding and awareness of issues and challenges around biodiversity. You know what are the issues and what are the challenges? that is the to know it or to increase the awareness program and you know india is a vast country city of natural environments soil climate ecological regions flora and fauna and you know indian agriculture is progressively moving up in spite of traps in food grade production and it is possible due to massive application of science and technology you know the indian development in science and technology now it can be with that part with the other parts of the world and the success for the agricultural development came only with the high yielding varieties originated from the natural ones and you know the high yielding seeds are also the high eating seeds consuming a lot of fertilizers and manures what we are using today now you know the biological manures instead of inorganic fertilizers or others now what is biodiversity it is the variety of life in all its forms levels and combinations that is i u c n and world world f and the variability among the living organisms from all sources all over the world including terrestrial marine and other aquatic ecosystems and the ecological complexes of which they are the part now if you see the global data on all biodiversity you see that insects are topping then you find invertebrates then we got the fungi and gradually others number and angiosperms also there <coughs> this is the overall view of the world biodiversity now what how the biodiversity evolved you know life came on the earth from 3.7 to 3.85 billion years ago and evolutionary history shapes contemporary physical and the biological environment and the current diversity of the species is a product of the process of mutation selection extinction and speciation some of the species have already extinct so this is all because of the mutation selection and the speciation and you know globally there are 27 biodiversity hotspots which represents 
the total covering all over the world. You know, initially, in the biodiversity day, it was initially decided that 29 December was designated as the International Day for Biodiversity. It was created by the second committee of the UN General Assembly in late 1993. But in 2000 December, UN General Assembly adopted 22nd May as the International Day for Biodiversity. Why? To commemorate the adoption of the text of the convention on 22nd May 1992 by the Nairobi Final Act of the Conference for the adoption of the agreed text of the Convention of the Biological Diversity. From that day onwards, it is treated as 22nd May as the International Day for Biological Diversity. And biodiversity is not just another factor. It is as crucial to the living world as it is cultural diversity. So you can mix up. Biodiversity is related with the cultural diversity. Both sources of diversity are linked. And the future that we want to build depends on our collective ability to safeguard them both. Irina Bokova in 200, uh, 2013, UNESCO Director General on the International Day for Biological Diversity proposed this, that the biodiversity is just another factor which is with the living world as well as the cultural diversity. And biodiversity, why it is essential for sustainable development and human well-being? There are many examples. Number one, biodiversity is a vital asset in the global and local economies. Food production depends on biodiversity and the services provided by the ecosystems. Clean and secure supplies of water also depend on biodiversity. Biodiversity and ecosystem functioning provide goods and services essential for human health, clean air and water, and regulation of pests and diseases. Biodiversity is the basis for sustainable livelihoods. Traditional knowledge associated with the biodiversity is also important and to have the value not only to those who depend on their daily lives, but to modern industry and agriculture as well. Biodiversity is the cornerstone of the work belief systems, and basic survival, survival of many women. Biodiversity plays a major role in mitigating climate change by contributing long-term sequester of carbon dioxide, carbon in a number of biomes. It built, even the built environments like our cities are linked to and affected by biodiversity. So biodiversity is essential for the sustainable development. You can see the art from the Apollo 17, how does it look? There is no precise figure. If you want to see how many plants or species are there, there are estimates that range from 3 million to 80 million or more. In case of angiosperms, as we are a botanist, I can tell you that Pakhtajan in 1997 says 260,000 species, and Mabarle said 240,000 species, and Thorne in 2000 said 254,990 species. But you know, in Indian flora, the hookah, he did a seven volume book. He classified, he collected 14,312 species covering all British India. That is empire. That is the India, present day India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Nepal, Tibet, Bangladesh, Burma, Sri Lanka, Malayan Peninsula, Penang, Perak, Singapore. That covers 14,312 species. But in today's scenario, the botanical survey has given the only in Indian context. There is more than 17,000 species of angiosperms are known. As you know, the Tagore, what he said, once he said, India must use the gift of science. Why? To catch up with the advanced nations, failing which she will fail to reap the harvest of the present day. That's why that was his first comment that India must use the gift of science. What is the development taking place throughout the world should be accepted in India as a whole. And Tagore said that high education is that but I slept that it is not merely gives us information but makes our life in harmony. And you know that I slept and dreamed that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. So we have to serve in that way. And you know, food problems have haunted mankind since time immemorial. Because there are always problems of the food. 
problem became acute in more or less all countries in the middle of the last century after the world war so there are you see there are still more hungry people in the world today than ever before in many developing countries the poor cannot afford to buy the food you see the picture today the green revolution gave us food security but today there is a need for another such revolution the recent food and agriculture organization summit concluded over 100 million join the world's hungry and 22 countries in the world are vulnerable chronic hunger so that is a threat to all of us to think how to secure food for all the people in the world to solve the severity of the problem the breeding of the improved varieties combined with the expanded use of fertilizers other chemical outputs and irrigation it will lead to dramatic yield increase in asia and latin america now agriculture you know agriculture and allied sector contributes nearly 22% of the gross domestic product gdp of india while you know about 70% of the population are dependent fully on agriculture for their livelihood efforts to increase production of fruits vegetables and horticultural crops would ensure both food security and adequate remuneration for farmers whatever you increase production of fruit vegetables everything but you know that sami ji what guru sami vivekananda what is said it is difficult to teach philosophy of man who is desperate to have a handful of rice a person who need to have a handful of rice it's very difficult so you see that food insecurity threatens the biodiversity the whole market that is giving awareness to all of us now as you know the biodiversity the term is shared in more 1980 as the bio, biological diversity by north and macmenas but biodiversity the abbreviated form coined by rosen walter rosen in 1985 and you know it was termed in 85 and there are all over the world 85 definitions we are not going to deal that but it is the variability of life in forms variability of life in levels variability of life in combinations that's why we call variety of genes variety of species variety of habitats and the variety of ecosystems that is that's why we call it as the genetic diversity species diversity and the ecosystem diversity these are fully independent or dependent with the human population growing all over the world and that if you see the origin the evolutionary tree that it originated from the ancestors that the three domains are colored you see that this is the bacteria from their blue green algae archaea green and finally eukaryotes origin of the biodiversity it came like this and it is important why it is important it has ethical historical cultural value it has ecosystem value it has economic value and it has evolutionary value and the food 30000 or more plants of the edible parts you know the global population fully dependent on this 30000 or more plants those who are vegetarian strictly dependent on these groups of plants which are known globally now there are climate changes as the whole world is changing and we have the human exposure regional weather changes what are the heat waves extreme weather temperature precipitation sea level increase that's why if there are regional weather changes what are those microbial changes contamination paths transmission dy dynamics and you know the changes in the agro ecosystems hydrology socio economic and demographic eruption now finally these are the modulating influences and it has the impact on human health why temperature related ill uh, illness and death extreme weather related floods storms all health effects air pollution related health effects water and food borne diseases vector borne and rodent borne diseases effects of food and water shortages mental and nutritional infectious diseases and other effects so these are all climate changes related to your covid 19 in last two years we are what we are facing and you know the species is the yardstick by which the variety of life has traditionally we can be measured
Now, why do we see the from the variations in the sequence of the DNA and from the adaptive response to the environment? Because the genetic material is the DNA and their response to the particular environment where this population are growing. That's why you have to know the sequence of the DNA and their responses to the particular environment. And for food security, there are major components, three major components. We need adequacy in food production, stability in food supply. If there is no supply of food, it has to be ensured to have the stability. Now the physical and the economic access of the food to the vulnerable sections of the population. India achieved five-fold increase in food production in the last 75 years after the independence. That is possible, why? Due to timely and adequate supply of the inputs. Technology, seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, machinery, irrigation, and finally, the credit. That's why India has increased five-fold in the food production. Now, if you see the wild plants, that are used in farming systems for fodder, fertilizer, packaging, fencing, and especially important as the genetic materials. Farmers rely on soil microorganisms to maintain soil fertility and the structure for crop production. To have the crop production, you ought to have the soil microorganisms and the quality of the soil. And wild species in the natural ecological communities for crop pollination. Because pollination is an effective tool to get the better quality of the fruits and the seeds ultimately for the next generation. And to have the pest and the predator control so that we can achieve to our success. Now, there is a the development and adoption of eco-agriculture. That is investment to increase crop, livestock, forest and fishery productivity is essential in many low-income rural regions. The new concept eco-agriculture approaches can be used at the same time to conserve or enhance the natural biodiversity. You know, we call the biodiversity the natural library. It is present. All the living species, we call it just like a library. We call the living library is known as the natural biodiversity. So eco-agriculture approach can be used to develop promote and support eco-agriculture, you ought to have the innovations. That innovations will require increased research, rebuilding of technical assistance services which support producers in managing both agricultural and natural resources. In some cases, policy changes. Now, what is today's stark realities? If you see at the global level, 800 people cannot afford two courses of meal a day. About 30,000 population, half of them are children, die every day due to hunger and malnutrition. Nearly 1.2 billion people live in a family having less than an income of 50 rupees per day. So this is the real reality, stark reality in today's scenario about the food security of the food production or to get the quality food. 800 people cannot afford. So a new green revolution is essential. Why? because it will expect to be achieved through the combinatorial approach. What are those? You ought to have a breeding program or genetic engineering mediated biotechnological applications. What are those? Because India is a vast country, as I have said, having diverse resources, enormous possibility for utilizing variable germplasm. We have various types of tomato, onion, potato, different types of germplasm. You see the plant genetic resources in agriculture, feeding tomato, cultivated species and the wild species, we get like of us, that is disease resistance variety. Resistance to parasitic fungi, we get other variety, virus resistance, nematode resistance, insect resistance. So these are the different groups of lycoparsicum. Improved fruit quality, unfavorable environment, these species can grow. So these are the different species which can be achieved through the genetic modification. So these are utilized nowadays to have the better yield. Now can this new form of the biotechnology generated GM crop 
help developing countries and resource poor farmers. Yes, improve food and the nutritional security. It can promote sustainable agriculture. It can reduce environmental impact, empower the rural sector through income generation, and reduce economic inequality, increase crop productivity, and reduce crop damage and food loss. So these are some of the salient points which can be utilized for this. So genetic modification of food is not new. Normally, you know, virtually all of the food we have ever eaten has been genetically modified. What is done today, the food matters, that is all are genetically modified. In fact, you know, nature is the master player of GM production. Nature, nature is the master player. Now, in the today's genetically engineer or the modified crops, what are those? The genetic modification. True genetic engineering is a new invention where one can intentionally change the genetic makeup of many our crops. One can change the gene sequences of the genetic makeup. Now, what are the target crops for transgenic research in India? We have grain legumes, we have oil seed, we have vegetables, fruits, medicinal plants, other cash crops, cereals, rice, wheat, cotton, coffee, brahmi, papaya, potato, chili, cabbage, tomato, brinjal, mustard, groundnut, chickpea, mung bean, pigeon pea. So these are now mainly the selected target crops which are used for the transgenic research in India. You see, this is the development of the transgenic chickpea plants that is growing in the laboratory. Now you can see it, this is the transgenic rice plants. They are growing in the laboratory. Now you see the golden rice. That has been developed through the inoculation, including changing with the bacteria, injecting the bacteria, we get the golden rice, we can nutritionally rich, and this is helping the poor country or the underdeveloped country to have the rich protein rich or the flavored rice for the betterment. Now if you see the crop production, vegetable crop production in West Bengal, in our state, if you see it, it is from the West Bengal. If you see the cucurbits, we got 160 hectare, you know, production of the cucurbits, some of like the total area, we have around 13 lakh hectare area, total production 225 lakh tons of the food matters, tomato, cabbage, cauliflower, peas, brinjal, onion, cucurbits, okra, radish, and many others. These areas are under vegetables in the state of West Bengal. And we get the production. So now if you see that Gidhan Jagura Kishabitala Jam Plasm, what they have collected and they are maintaining this, bottle good, pumpkin, pointed good, spine good, these are the different types. They are the different important morphological traits which are being preserved for the genetically modified. Now you see these are the different terms of pumpkin jam plasms. These are the different groups, varieties, they have come up from the basic area. So, twenty diverse elite clones are being maintained and elevated in an augmented design on All India Coordinated Research Project on Vegetable Crops of the Bidhan The clones are again evaluated on the basis of yield, quality, parameters, and in ambient condition. Also, the tolerance to insect pests and the diseases. You see the different types. You see, high, matter, high dry matter content. There are the varieties, you see, high protein content, high vitamin A content, vitamin D content. When you go to the market to purchase the different varieties of the bottle, if you see the structures like this, you see which one is having a high protein content, which type is having high vitamin content, and which type is having vitamin C content, and high dry matter. These are the different types of the contents. Now I come, because getting the fruit yield, one have to only depend sometimes for the fruit or the seeds, pollen grains. Pollen is a microscopic male sexual cell and that is essential for reproduction of seed plants. And it is in variety in the different taxonomic studies. Okay, just I'm passing. It is an ideal system for manipulating the plant genome in the techniques of genetic engineering as it is a direct contributor into the genetic constitution for the next generation. You know, these are the different structures of the pollen grains. If it's each and every species, individual genera the
Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, I guess again some technical issues happened with Professor Mondor. So let me check on him. The quality should matter. We have to know the insect behavior because they visit plants. They especially forage nature and the pollination mechanism. And also to find out the relationship between flowers and the pollinators. Because pollinators are essential in fruit setting and also apart from bagging and making processes. We'll see so sorry to, sir, excuse me, sorry to interrupt you. Patients, pollen types and share some of the insects, pollen germination and stigma type morphologically. You see, populinaceous flower, monodelpha stamens, we find it, some of the works, and you see that the insects, because we are telling about the biodiversity, plant-animal interaction, without this we cannot survive, visiting the flowers, and you see the germination of the pollen tube, these are the work, different types of anthar, heterostyle nature of the anthar, flower having, this is the type, fruits. Professor Mundal. Yes, the solanum. These are, you see, the butterfly visiting the Alstonia. There are not some visible, of these other apis visiting the Bixa like or Asia. Visible. Some of the like other apis visible. visiting Bixa. So, Coriandrum. The butterfly visiting Alangyam. Apis visiting Alangyam. Polygamous club. Sir, your slides are not visible. Huh? It's not visible? Dr. Mandal, your slides are not visible. Let me show. Oh, is it not visible? No, yeah. Sir, not visible. Oh, again, what happened? Something wrong? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Oh, one second. Just a minute. I'll check it up. Yeah. Slide, slide not visible. I'm sorry. Oh, just... Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible. Hello. Yes, sir. Visible. Yes, sir. Visible. visible. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sir. Is it visible now? Ah, uh, yes, or visible. You can continue. Okay, 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 fine. Okay, now you yes, can sir. see. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. We okay. all can. See. So these are the, you see the papillaceous flower, and this is the insect plant interaction pollination. Otherwise, no food or the seeds. Yeah, we are coming. Yeah. So this is in Carica papaya trigona visiting the flowers. You can see it now. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So you see the trips on the corolla throat, how it is there, they are going for the nectar collection. Borbo visiting the flower, so this is the insect pollinated, butterfly. These are the, some of the groups of the insect visitors, you know, Hymeroptera group, Thysanoptera, Depidoptera, Ormicidae and Sunbird also there. This is the work of the Ashoka, the visiting 
So you know that globally, about 1330 estimated crop plants, approximately 1,000, that is 75 percent, are pollinated by animals. Pollinators deliver one out of three mouthful of food we eat and beverages we drink. That is why pollinators are essential. Approximately 25 percent of birds, including fruits, include fruit or seeds as a major part of their diet. Plants provide leg egg laying and nesting sites for many insects. <coughs> so the Green Revolution popularized the use of conventional hybridization to increase yield. The GM hybridized breeds originated developed countries and were further hybridized with the local varieties in the developing world and to create high yield strains resistance to local climate and diseases. The huge gene pool of various wild and indigenous breeds have collapsed causing widespread genetic erosion and genetic pollution. This has resulted in loss of genetic diversity and biodiversity as a whole. GM organisms have genetic material altered by the genetic engineering procedures such as uh, RDNA technology and GM crops have become a common source for the genetic pollution not only of wild varieties but also of domesticated varieties derived from the classical hybridization. Genetic erosion coupled with genetic pollution may be destroying unique genotypes thereby creating a hidden crisis which could result in a severe threat to our food security. Diverse genetic material could e cease to exist which would impact our ability to further hybridize food crops and livestock against more resistance diseases and climatic changes. Sir David King, the former chief scientific advisor to the United Kingdom government, told a parliamentary inquiry in the United Kingdom that it is self-evident that the massive growth in the human population through the 20th century has had more impact on biodiversity than any other single factor. Human population is having the more impact on the biodiversity. That has been stated by Sir David King in the United Kingdom government. And this is the importance of the conservation. India, one of the 17 megadiversity countries of the world, having 34 biodiversity hotspots. We have to preserve it. The conservation of the biodiversity is the basic need of modern time to save and preserve the natural well for sustainable use. As per estimate, what we could see, that 12 million hectares of the tropical forest are cleared every year for agriculture and 3.8 million hectares for fuel wood. About 15% of the world species are likely to become extinct by 2030 AD and about 25% by 2050 AD if it goes on like this. So there will be the loss of biodiversity if it is going on like this. So it is our moral duty to preserve or to conserve the biodiversity. The main causal agents for the extinction of the species are human beings. As they alter habitats, chiefly forests, wetlands, and also freshwater bodies. Extinction of gene pools is even more widespread than the species. Wild gene pools are also destroyed. The domesticated gene pools are lost through the replacement of the traditional crop varieties and livestock breed by the modern ones. We have to think. Now it is a threat to the existence of the pollinators. Loss, modification, and fragmentation of the habitat. Excessive use of pesticides. Expanding conversion of landscape to human uses. Today, the pollination systems are threatened by the inadequacy of sustainable managed indigenous or imported pollinators. The declination, the declination of pollinators is one of the reasons of environmental degradation, as well as adverse effect on plant population. So that's why for the sustainable development, it is very essential that agriculture and forest sustains life on earth, providing food for humans and animals. The implication of the growing dependence on fertilizer used along with the various adverse environmental factors on soil, groundwater, surface water, flora and fauna are the major challenges. So, Policy of options and need for an effective and dynamic extension of the organization for management of agroecosystems 
has to be explored in a proper way. Agriculture industry transition, land acquisition through ages, and the impact on environmental sustainability can be looked in a holistic manner. The participatory technology development, PTD, is an essential prerequisite for a balanced and sustainable development with environmental consideration is the central point. The success of Green Revolution saved millions of people from hunger and death in developing countries. Sustenance of crop productivity through disease and insect resistance or increased crop productivity through novel genes and the value-added crops having significant impact in increasing food supply would reduce food prices for poor farmers. Significant achievement in plant genetic engineering for nutrition-rich crops could reduce the malnutrition of the people. So, in today's scenario, if we see all people require food and ensuring greater food productivity, irrespective of the global climate change, would help the policymakers to take the right decision for its adequate productivity and deliver it to all. So, it is essential for all people to require food and we have to ensure it. Today, it is our moral duty to conserve the plant dwell of this planet for our happiness and prosperity and the generation to come. Not only the plant dwell, all the biological wealth, plant, animal, everything that is needed for our prosperity and happiness. You see that Thomas Lovejoy, what he said, the natural species of the library from which the genetic engineers can work. And Thomas Eisner Bulletin, what he said, biodiversity is the greatest treasure we have. Its diminishment is to be prevented at all costs. Now, I give you one quotation from the Valerie Bloom, one African lady. He has written a book, One River, Many Creeks. You know, in his book, there is a book on poems, 150 poems all over the world. That is Macmillan Children's book published from London. And you know, there are two poems from India, one from Tagore and one from the great poet Nirandunath Chakraborty. Two poems are there in this book. What is that? One poem, you see, the key of the kingdom. This is the key of the kingdom. In that kingdom is a city. In that city is a town. In that town there is a street. In that street there ends a lane. In that lane there is a yard. In that yard there is a house. In that house, there waits a room. In that room, there is a bed. On that bed, there is a basket, a basket of flowers. You see on the other side, basket, flowers in the basket, basket on the bed, bed in the chamber, chamber in the house, house in the windy yard, yard in the winding lane, lane in the broad street, street in the high town, town in the city, city in the kingdom. This is the key of the kingdom. I thought this is needed for all living persons, human beings should know it, what is the key of the kingdom. That's why I selected it and this is for all botanists to know it. Now I give you from one poem from Rabindranath Tagore Gitanjali that I have had my invitation to this world's festival and thus my life has been blessed. My, my eyes have seen and my eyes have heard. It was my part at this fest to play upon my instrument and I have done all I could. Now I ask, has the time come at last when I may go in and see thy face and offer thee my silent salutation? That is Rudev Ravindranath Tagore. He has written in 1912 a book Gitanjali for which he has been awarded the first Asian and non-European to get the Nobel Prize in 1913. And I congratulate to all my PhD students. They are the 35 students who have been awarded. And also, Patachara is the number 16. He did his PhD under me at Vishwabharati. I congratulate all my students. These are all students. And my publications are all globally. You see from Annals of Allergy USA, Arabiology Italy, Ghana from Sweden, Annals of Agriculture and Environmental Medicine, Poland. Bangladesh Journal of Botany, Bangladesh Journal of Plant Taxonomy, Pakistan Journal of Biological Sciences, Water Science and Technology, UK, Indoor Air Quality, UK, Systematics and Conservation, UK, Clarendon Press, Oxford, Research Periodical Book Publishing, USA, Cambridge University Press, Sericologia, France, Candolia, Geneva, 
Russian Academy of Sciences, Chinese Academy of Science Congress, Sciences, International Botanical Congress, Japan, ICPB or Mexico, and in India we have other journals like Current Science, Phytomorphology, Indian Journal of Parabiology. Uh, these are other groups of journals from where the research papers are being published by my students and with their help we have published. And I got in my lifetime, these are the following awards, starting from Young Scientist Award to Paul Johannes Brühl by the Asiatic Society, as you know, the Minister of Culture, Government of India. Paul Johannes Brühl, the last one, 2017, I mentioned it because he was the first professor and head department of botany, a German scientist, started the department of botany and he was appointed by the then Vice Chancellor, Sir Ashutosh Mukherjee of the University of Calcutta to appoint Paul Johannes Brühl as the first professor and head department of botany, Calcutta University. And you know Professor Brühl's under work, Professor Jatish Chandra Sengupta, a celebrated plant physiologist. He worked on the field of pollination biology in Aishwarya Kassifis and published the first research paper in 1927 under Paul Johannes Brühl. That is the word for specimens. Now I have visited these other countries, you know it. And this is the last one. I received the Millennium Scientist Medal for my whole life's work recognized by the government of India and that is the national award I received it from the Honorable Prime Minister. You can see Dr. Manmohan Singh on his side, Sri Kapil Sibal, the Human Resource Minister and on my right side is Manishankar Ayar, the Minister for Northeastern Region. The Science Congress was held in Sri Lanka and that's all. So this is all about my talk. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any query or anything, you can tell me. I will be happy to tell you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, sir. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You, sir. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Actually, we, I thought that we all know that the morning shows the day and what it start, starts, sir. Thank you, sir, for your on, wonderful, in-depth and diverse presentation. Uh, you perfectly pointed out the essential step to address the food security and the nutritional security of the largest democracy. And I think it is the high time to rethink about our conservation issues of the natural resource and the nutritional policies of our country. So I also think that we can all connect deeply to your content that you talked about. It's a pleasure to have you with us sir, today. Now the session is open for interaction and we will take few questions. Uh, so any of the participants, if you have any yeah. question, please. Yeah, Sh Professor Sudendu Mandal, I'm Dr. Yeah. Swami Chatterjee. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, congratulations. I, I can, I'm very uh, happy that you are present today. Yeah, yeah, you took yeah, our some of the classes at the MSC level. I still remember Swamita. That was fantastic, uh, yeah. 1971, 72. Have a nice informative delivery, uh, very good uh, speech. Uh, I want to know that uh, you have mentioned the importance of biodiversity. It is very important for climate change, global warming, that is on part of environment. But uh, for biodiversity, genetic species and ecological diversity, more stress should be given on ecological diversity as, yeah. and more stress should be given on the planting. As you know, the power head, India is the minimum, power head plant is 28. In contrast to uh, in Australia, power head number of plants is 823, in Argentina 810. In India, it is par head, plant number is only 28. So planting is most important. And most important thing is the conservation. Conservation of flora, fauna, etc. Is it not? So uh, congratulations for your nice delivery. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Sumita. Thank you. Now, anyone else, if you have any questions, participants, guests? So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I guess it's a very 
wonderful in-depth presentation you have just heard. Now, I would like to request Dr. Alok Kumar Mukherjee from Department of Conservation Biology to kindly introduce our next speaker for the webinar. Hello. Yes. Am I audible? Are, yes, sir, you are audible. Thank you, Sandeepan. Have a great day for everyone. On this auspicious International Biodiversity Day, it is my pleasure to introduce my teacher as well as supervisor and our next honorable speaker, Dr. Apurva Rathan Ghosh, now the professor of environmental science in the University of Bardhavan. He was the joint director in internal quality assurance cell, that is IQAC, and director of UGC Academic Staff College, presently in Human Resource Development Center of the university. Professor Ghosh has received the Indian Science Academy Visiting Fellowship and Fellowship from Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai. He has received the Best Presenter Award from IUEAS, Austin, USA, and acted as invited speaker and panel expert in different universities like University of Manchester, UK, BIT in China, and different universities of South Korea. He has got authorship of eight books, nine chapters in edited volumes, and hundreds, more than 160 research papers published in referred national and international journals with more than 850 citations. Professor Ghosh has already bagged 21 research projects and schemes sponsored by different Indian agencies. So far, 14 students awarded MPhil degree, 21 students, including me, already awarded PhD award and eight are registered and working presently under his supervision. Professor Ghosh is actively engaged as member coordinator with peer team of NAC Government of India. Since 2010, he has worked as expert member of University Grant Commission, NUPA, as well as expert member of different universities. He has got experience to work as an expert member in academic audit committee in Northeastern universities and other universities of India. He is also nominated as expert member of Northeast and Assam Public Service Commission, Jharkhand Public Service Commission, etc. He has been assigned as a resource person to deliver lecture on academic audit and environmental green auditing in different academic institutions as, as well as industrial uh, sectors. He is the life member of different national and international bodies and editorial board of national and international peer reviewed journals. Professor Ghosh has already delivered more than 70 seminar lectures, 70 lectures in different 20 different academic staff colleges, 86 invited popular lectures shared over 40 national and international conferences. So, please welcome Professor Ghosh for his nice and resourceful presentation. Thank you, sir for your presence in this occasion. On behalf of the organizing department of Durgapur Government College, I am requesting to you, sir, to start your presentation. Thank you, sir. Dr. Rapurva, I am Jan. I am Jan to listen to your lecture. Thank you. Congratulations. Best wishes, Dr. Ghosh, all the best. Congratulations. Okay, please. Sir, kindly please unmute yourself. You are not audible. Sorry, 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 sorry. So, sometimes it's become very difficult to speak after the stalwarts like Sudan Dumondong, the respected teacher of so many teachers and the presentation what he has done I have to go with this actually not in repetition so this become another difficulties to speak after the stalwart like Sudhandu Mandal I am a math teacher and uh, the information what I want to share with my students, 
my respected teachers present here today, my elderly brother like Devnath, all the other faculty members, Maitriism like my sister, and over and above my dear beloved students, the teacher for whom I am here, that is Dr. Olok Mukherjee. I should praise before starting my lecture, that is Durgapur Government College, accredited by the National Assessment and Accreditation Council as A grade college. Some of you might be knowing that it's become very difficult in the present situation in a government college to get A. It's become very difficult. And if you say the number of this A grade government college is very, very less. When the respected anchor story, he has mentioned a very nice quotation. I must praise you. And he has really shown the seed of the sustainable development. Obviously, with the students, it is an interactive session. And uh, the most important part of it is to gain the confidence. The students, those who are in the budding stage before entering into the field of research. And their experience and exposure with the scientists like Dr. Shudandu Mundal is very, very essential. Like Pabsa Somi Chatterjee, like Pabsa Repidas, so many other the dignitaries present here. So towards sustainable development and connecting with, connecting the lives with or through interactions and themselves. It is very much relevant today as it is told by the need of the hour. When we are entering into the eve of forthcoming 49th World Environment Day coming soon on 5th of June. And you have seen with the theme only one earth. By the students from the geology or geography, they may differ with me, but I am sure about it that the terminology coined by Eugen F. Stoimer and also supported and stated by Nobel laureate Paul Krusner, this is the era of Anthropocene. This epoch, it has started in 1945 after the Trinity nuclear bomb test on 16th of July, 1945. So after 1945, we have entered into a very, very significant epoch or era where the human impact on Earth's geology and ecosystems is giving us not only the climate change, but also the change in the biodiversity. If you see the coin of two eggs, they are occupying these two. And if I say about the sustainable development, because these organizers, they have stated in their theme, that is the towards sustainable development. All we might be doing that United Nations during the Millennium Summit, which was held in New York during September 6 to 8. And they have established eight international goals, eight international development goals for the year 2015. And 
UN, they have declared it as UN Millennium Declaration, which was signed in September 2000. And it is called the Millennium Development Goals. And if you see the importance of this Millennium Development Goal, the first point which was raised by Dr. Shrandu Mundal, that is the food security. So food for all. And you will see the same thing. It was declared in 2000 that we have to achieve the goal by 2015. And the first goal was eradication of extreme poverty and hunger. And if you see the last goal of it, last not the seventh goal of it, there you will see in the seventh goal, they have mentioned ensure environmental sustainability. And in this environmental sustainability, there are four targets and the target number seven B is meant for reduce biodiversity loss. And they have emphasized on reduction of loss of forest cover, carbon dioxide emission, ozone depleting substances, fish stocks, you might be knowing, 6% of the total world population, they are getting their food, at least the protein source from the fish. Then water resources, terrestrial and marine areas, and the threatened species with extinction. Then after 2016, when the Sustainable Development Goal succeeded by Millennium Development Goal, there you can see they have mentioned two points. One is goal number 14. In the goal number 14, they have given the importance of conservation and sustainable use of oceans, seas, and marine resources. And in this point, they have pointed out some of the different issues which can be discussed with you so that you do understand what is the importance of sustainable development and this biodiversity. In this point regarding the goal number 14, if I go back to the Millennium Development Goal, there are eight goals you have seen. There are 21 targets and 61 indicators. And if you go to the Sustainable Development Goal, you will see there are 17 goals. There are 161 targets and 232 indicators. And the most important part of it, that is, 193 countries' representatives, they have prepared this sustainable goal. So it's obviously that the point which has been raised by Professor Subhendu Mondol of food security, and they have granted the first two points, sustainable goal number one, that is zero poverty. And the sustainable goal number two, that is zero hunger. Now the question is how much they have achieved. But to me, the research 
by the creams of the crop of our country today? Obviously, they can perform this good research through the motivation of their teachers like Surendu Mondon, Professor Somir Bhattacharya, Somir Chatterjee, Ashok Bhattacharya. They can start with this initiative, with this motivation. And I can tell you one thing more. In 2020, Terry, you might be knowing that the Tata Institute of Research and Institute, that is their Energy and Research Institute, they have conducted a flagship program. And our Prime Minister, on February 11th, the program was held in 11th and 12th. On 11th, he addressed our country with two facets which is required for our country. The one is health for all the people and health of our planet. If our planet is healthy, if we can manage the ecological restoration, then the people of our country will be healthy. The issue is obviously a great thing to think. And what I'm asking about uh, that is called the goal number 14. What, what we have included there, we have to mitigate the increased ocean acidification. We have to protect the marine biodiversity. We have to check the deterioration of coastal waters due to pollution and coastal eutrophication. All you know, the coastal eutrophication now is a, another big threat for the coastal life. Where you will see, due to this eutrophication, there are no dead zones are appear. That is called dead zone because there is no oxygen. And all you know, at least 3 billion people, they rely on these marine resources. At least 1.6 billion people, they are directly maintaining their livelihoods from this. And if I, was, if I can say, we have been able only to identify the two lack of species in the oceans. And it is told that the ocean is the biggest source of proteins. But what we are doing? In every minute, we are disposing at least 15 tons of plastics into the ocean. That is why you are getting you are getting the picture of the so many mammals, including the whales containing huge amount of plastics in their stomach. And the, due to this, we are losing at least 10 lakhs of sea birds. Can you imagine this thing? 10 lakhs of sea birds, 1 lakh of marine mammals, and huge number of fishes. And that is why this sustainable development goal number 14 is incorporated into the Convention of Biological Diversity by UNFCC. The second, that is goal number 15. If you consider the goal number 15 of the sustainable development goals, it is meant to protect, to restore, and to promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystem. We have to sustainably manage the forest. We have to combat the desertification and halt and reverse land. A new word came that is turn the tide. That means reverse land degradation. 
and halt biodiversity loss. My dear students, in this goal, they have clearly mentioned, which has been mentioned in the targets. Actually, indicators are used to measure the targets. In these targets, they have clearly mentioned that, which also are mentioned by Dr. Mondal, Professor Mondal, preventing the invasion of introduction of species. Then protection of endangered species and the different issues which has been taken into my account that is the protection of forest in the tune of ecosystem services. Can I be excused for a second please? Sorry for the interruption. Now the protection of the forests in the tune of ecosystem, services, livelihoods, and green economy. Today is 22nd of May, just on the last day, 21st of May, we have lost Sundarlal Bohubna and the COVID situation he suffered due to oxygen. But the man who fight for this, to get the oxygen, to give the oxygen to the planet, the people of this planet. And we are searching for the sources, how to get the oxygen. Anyway, so he told, ecology is the permanent economy. And the preservation of these mountain ecosystems, and the halting of animal extinction. So, these different issues I want to discuss with you with few of my slides, because Professor Mondal has already told that is the International Day of Biodiversity, which is colloquially known as World, World Biodiversity Day. And really, first of all, it was taken sometimes in December 2000. Now it is taken as a day to be celebrated. This is the 21st celebration of this World Biodiversity Day in the year 20, 2022, where we have mentioned with the thing that is Building a shared future for all life. So with, I will start my presentation. And I want to share this. Sorry, sorry. Okay, just a minute. Uh, sir, now is it full screen? Can you tell me one? Yes, sir. One yes, sir. It's full screen, sir. Okay. So my topic that I have chosen, that is biological annihilation akin to a sixth mass extinction event. In one hand, Professor Mondal has given you so many opportunities and research scope to get the more food to serve the people. But I want to discuss that how to get rid of this sixth mass extinction. As it is mentioned, but I want to add two things. This Darwin after graduation start with as a navigator in the second voice of Her Majesty ship, Beagle. This was the second voice. 
it is very important for our students to study the biodiversity. When the Darwin told the human being at the pinnacle that you have seen here. And so far we have identified the 21 lack of species, but unidentified at least more than 150 to 2000 crores. And if you consider my students, the 10,000 meter constant, life can exist 10,000 meter above and 10,000 meter below the surface of the earth. But our knowledge, which is concerned for the microbes, everyone can say the life is existing on this. Life is everywhere, but there is an exception. That is the Dalol water body or lake where the temperature is, even in winter, 45 degrees centigrade, with high salinity and high acidic medium. The importance of the planet is you cannot ignore for the habitats. It is told that nature has taken 60 million years to prepare the habitat for the life. But by only taking one lakh year, we have made this life in the earth as a threatened one. Obviously, carbon dioxide is one of them. And this rise in carbon dioxide, the concentration of the carbon dioxide, just I can give you one example. In the May 2021, the concentration of carbon dioxide was 418, 418.95 ppm. Just in this month, that means May 2022, the carbon dioxide is ever highest today. That is 421.37. And all you know, it is told by 2025, if the carbon dioxide concentration becomes 430, then there will be a temperature rise in 2 degrees centigrade. Sea level will rise like that, which has been mentioned by Dr. Mondo. And as you have seen, in COP26, it was denoted by everybody that 1.5 degree matters. So we have to check this, all these things. We must not exceed the temperature 1.5 degree. So temperature is one of the most important factor if you see from the solar system, the position of our planet is in the middle, if I consider in between Venus and Mars. If you see the distance from the sun and Venus, it is only 100, 100, 107 million kilometers, where the temperature is 464 degrees centigrade. And if you consider the Mars, it is 228 million kilometers, where the temperature is minus 60 degrees centigrade. And in between them, our Earth, the beautiful and the bountiful Goldilocks where the temperature is plus minus uh, 15 degree plus minus 0 0.5 degree centigrade. So position of the earth is very important in this regard, maintaining this temperature. That is why it is told earth is Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold, but just right. These are some of the primitive animals that which can give us the very insight into this study of biodiversity. And Sir is measuring the different plant species 
and basically uh, my subject is geology. I'm a student of geology. I have considered starting from the mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, mollusks, canalids, and insects, which is the most number of the insects. And if you see, these are the different endangered, vulnerable, rare, and intermediate. They are the, these are the number of species that are intermediate. So the total number of species is there, which is under this condition. Okay. So it has been mentioned by Dr. Mundal that beforehand I can, uh, I used to say that one more thing that in the year 1916, biological diversity thus this term was first used by J. Arthur Harris in his book, it, in his article, it, it was published in Scientific American the variable desert. And in the year 1974, it was told by John Tarborn, that is the natural diversity. Obviously, after that, Thomas Engine Lovejoy first termed the biological diversity. But he has uh, given a very comprehensive, introduced the a comprehensive idea about this and it has been communicated to the all the scientific community and as it has been told that according to Edward Osborne Wilson he told that the W that means Walter G. Rosen concentrated form of biodiversity which was used and in the year 1988 it was first appeared in the publication. So the, our major concern on the biodiversity since commemoration of the World Environment Day during the year 1986, when the theme was a tree for peace. After that, at least eight different biological, eight different World Environment Day were celebrated, keeping in views of the importance of the biological diversity out of this. And the main objective was protection, restoration, preservation of habitats to halt the loss of biodiversity, which has been taken place in different times. And according to them, in the year 2010, when the theme was many species, one planet, one future, and UNEP has taken this as a decade from this 2021 to 2030, which is meant for this ecological restoration and protection. And in last year, you have also celebrated the year of biodiversity in the name of time for nature this ecological restoration is one of the important factors. And the very basic thing, there are 17 mega diversity country, 36 hotspots in the world. And Colombia is the second one, Brazil is the first one. I have taken Colombia because in 2021, the Colombia celebrated the biodiversity program. But all, if you see, there are at least 10 to 15 percent of the species, these are available in the North America and the European countries. And in the tropical countries, there are more number of invertebrates, especially the insects. For my dear students, 70 percent of the animal species is invertebrates, and among these 95 percent are not even identified today. But that, as it is mentioned earlier, according to Norman, human beings are using at least 80,000 plant species, including algae, as a food items. And out of these 200 species are used by 20% of the world population, and they have included in their food item at least four foods, 
that means which is known as rice, wheat, potato and maize. And they are getting the energy, vital energy. That means 80% of the human population. And for our country, as it is also mentioned by Professor Mondo, Indian subcontinent, this is the second largest producer of the rice in the, and they are also the exporter of. And before Green Revolution, there were 42,000 varieties of rice in India. And I hope the creams of the crop, those the students who are present here, they will take a note of it that now only 20% is existing today. What we call rice bowl of India, that is the West Bengal, which was in 1965, there are 4,800 uh, 4, varieties of rice. If I have made any mistake in this point, that should, I would request Professor Mondo to uh, make it correct. Now we have only 200 varieties. We must not forget about our Basanti. Whoever it is in the world, they can claim the Textmoti or Kalmoti by the California. But it is our property. We have to keep in our mind. And among these 36 hotspots in the country, in the world, four hotspots are present in our country, that is in India. And we have got some unique species, like the single horned rhino, Asiatic lion in Gir forest, desert camel. You see that 30% of the camel population is weaver, which is present in the desert of our country. Wild ass of run of Kutch. The most important of these all food varieties found in the plants. India is called as the land of spices. And we are the highest producer and exporter of the spices. And we are exporting at least 75 types of spices all over the world. And the famous of them that is coming, which is called Jira. Then it is Mondel, uh, Professor Mondel told, red chili, turmeric, holud. Green cardamom, shobuj ronger, elach. And you see, the amount to which is coming in or giving input in our GDP that is coming brings forth the $212 million. But this is a business. And it was shared by so many countries. That is why UN told that the third world countries are making a business of $30 million by using the plants, animals, and microbes as of their medicinal values. If you consider the annex two countries, those who are very rich in biodiversity. And you all know, as I have told you a few minutes back, this Madagascar, that is the 70th mega diversity nation. But they are producing the bean crystal and bean blasting. And the plant, you know, which is commonly called as Madagascar perinquil, the botanist people must know the Catharanthus roseus. Simply, they are making a business of $15 million with these plants. I will tell you, recently, the Americans are also concerned about the biodiversity. And it is told that uh, they are, when they are spending $104 million every year for conserving the biodiversity and uh, for their purchasing the new car, they are spending $83 million for purchasing the car. So there is a, 
maybe a joke, but it's a big sit. This is that plant, all you know, that you are producing the very important plant, anti-cancer drug, that is Taxol, which is used for the treatment of cancer, like the breast cancer, ovarian cancer, lung cancer. Even then, this biodiversity which is threatened, and this climate change is responsible for that. Because it is causing two things. One, by elevating the sea level. This is a very basic thing. By rising the atmospheric temperature. Now, if you consider the loss of biodiversity, what is the loss of biodiversity due to it? resulting in the economy of a country, then you will see the valuation is amounting to 33 trillion dollars, simply a double of world GNP. And it is obvious that the species which is available today, it is not available, which is available, which is uh, once upon a time, which was available, it is not available today. That we know. These are some of the important species. The tree shoe, the smallest mammal, all you know. These are some of the important species. The whale is an endangered organism right now. This is our African black rhinoceros, osprey, which can have a very massive being wet. This is giant pandaka. This is already the passenger pigeon. It was the last member of this species, puffin bird, African bled. And you have seen these are some of these species, which is so what happened? Extinction. If you compare the huge loss of loss of this species, which we call the mass extinction, the first mass extinction, it is not the extinction of the species, is not the first time in this world, it is the sixth one. The first which was held in 444 million years ago, where the 86% of the species lost. Then in the second, this was late Devonian period. The third, that is Permian Triassic era. Fourth, that is Triassic Jurassic. Fifth, that is Cretaceous Paleogene. And the sixth, that is due to Anthropocene. Where? The 50% of any individuals are already extinct. And 83% of the wild mammals disappeared since the dawn of human evolution. This is the reason that is we call global warming. And as I have mentioned you, that the concentration of the carbon dioxide which was once upon a time 180 to 280, that is before 1760s. And the rate of increase, it is told, 0 0.7 degree. In particular, the Antarctica, it is three times at least more. And all you know, the Arctic and Antarctic region is responsible for our global climate change. And this, here I have mentioned the rate of extinction for the last 250 years, starting from 1600 to 1850. The rate was only two to three species in decade. After that, that means the second phase of industrial evolution, which is 850. All you know, 1760 is the last stage of agricultural revolution. After 1760, we are entering into the industrial revolution and the, after 1860, we have entered into the second phase of industrial revolution. So at that time, it was 20,000 species in decant. And this year, it is estimated that 20 lakh species are in danger. And 25% of the animal and plant species are threatened with extinction. 
when we are talking about the food security, one of the most important is fertilization, as well as spraying of insecticides or herbicides. Simply due to spraying of these pesticides, we are losing the $200 billion. Why? Because the natural pollination is restricted or limited. So when we are considering the Anthropocene, there are some, obviously, there are some reason behind it. Once upon a time, Aristotle told that the plants are created for animals and, uh, animals and animals for human beings. So it is a nature of human being instinct that they have the power of killing of the animals. As a result of that, in Bible, the creator of nature created grasses, grasses for animals, and animals to render service or sacrifice for humankind. And the great philosopher Immanuel Kant, you see the picture of it. He told that the man is the boss. So human has got this capacity and it is empowered that they have, they can kill the animals. Can you, do you want to know from where they have got this power? According to some anthropologists, actually these habits and the manner and culture developed due to earlier nature of hunting and gathering. But uh, some of the anthropologists, they have taken into account that at that time, the cranial capacity of the human being or the hominid group was, which is uh, uh, presently known as Australopithecus. They have, you see, from this slide, they have got only 588 cc. So the empowerment or the power or potentiality to kill the animals is may not be so many efficient to kill the animals. Instead of that, they may be dependent on the dead animals killed by natural cause or killed by other ferocious animals. And what is the cranial capacity today? It is 1,000 to 2,000 in an average of 1,330 cc. So you have seen the first evidence of animals of domestication that was recorded from the Egypt. But you see the human started hunting in at least 2 million years ago. Why I'm talking so? Because I want to see that the nature of the human being starting from this era to present day, their dependence on the killing of animals and to make loss in biodiversity, it was not the nature that we have today. Because nature has got it. Although, in our Shastra, in Manushangita, the early Dharma Shastra, as you know, it is not ethical or advisable to improve oneself's meat by others' meat. That means to kill the animal. I will tell you afterwards. To get the more meat for yourself. All we are responding, all we are giving the thrust that the one city of Hawaii, that is the province of China, they are blamed for this market, which is called Bruce market. Why? Because of this, bush meat or the live animal trading, they are responding, they are responsible for the destruction of the biodiversity. But I will give you one data. In the last 50 years, human population become double. 
and the production of animal meat is increased for three times faster. Think about it. Just by 50 years, human population become double. And the consumption of animal meat increased more than three times. So, every year we are killing at least two crore of terrestrial animals and at least 1.2 trillion of aquatic lives, including fish. And as you know, the African peoples are, whether they are rich or poor, it is measured that how many animals they killed and marketed. And that is why in Africa, there is a business annually of $73 million. And an African can earn $100,000 in a month only through this trading. And in this world, it is the business of 1 crore 23 lakh dollar. Who want to know? From where it is coming? You see? In European market, there are supplying 11,000 pounds of animal and bush meat per week from the wet market. And this is one bamboo rat. In London wet market, the price is about $40. This is another one that is monkey, which is costing him $140. Do you think that the poor people of the Hubei city or Indonesia or Philippines or this European country or African country, they are taking the meat of these animals. No. This has been taken by the rich, rich, rich people. They are satisfying their meat requirement, their enjoyment, their dinner, their lunch through this one. And every year, the wet markets are trading at least 40,000 primates, 40 lakh birds and 6.5 lakh reptiles and 3.5 crores of tropical fish and fishery products. There are so many wet markets in China, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, Bangkok, etc. In Indonesia, there is a big market, big, big wet market, which is named, you can search in the Google, that is the Salosi market. And every year they are selling 90,000 mammals. Can you imagine, sir? 90,000 mammals every year. And in a Thailand, they are trading 70,000 live birds of 276 species. After observing all these things, our great professor Andrew Cunningham, he told that these weight markers are time bomb. And as I have told you, this bush market is for the poor people, not for the poor people, but the rich people. They are enjoying the foods in their celebration, in the big birthday parties and marriage ceremony. So poor people of this one city or Vietnam or Africa, they are not getting the essence of this one. They are simply trading. And all you know, China is that country. They are getting or escaping to kill the li wild lives simply by using one terminology that from these wild animals we are extracting medicinal components. I have shown you one slide that is armadillo. Hmm? And right now against the coronavirus they have prepared a medicine which has been taken from the gallbladder of a bear. So, in their industry, in their medical industry or medicinal, where the medicinal or the drug industry or pharmacy, they are using the bear. So, this cannot be ignored. And WHO very recently, they have, they want to meet in the Kuming in 2020, but due to COVID, they have not been able. 
And I will tell you this situation, that the genosis, that the disease which is caused by the animals, these epidemics or pandemics is related with the climate change and biodiversity. So we have to prepare a cohesion between the human bacteria and virus, which was once upon a time, now it was destroyed, we have to establish once again. Otherwise, the COVID-19 or this novel virus, they can appear in other forms where we may face the music of this Pandora's box. So the impact of this microbial world, which has not been considered once upon a time by the scientists, even by the climate change scientists, but it was came into the picture, it was giving importance when it was published in Nature Journal. The 30 scientists of the nine countries, they have published this paper mentioning the impacts of microbes on, on climate change and impacts of climate change on microbes. And how many microbes you have? If you see the ocean, one into 10 to the power 13. It is told that if you connect one by one, one by one, the 60 galaxies, it can round about or spin about. So we are destroying the habitat or the population due to climate change. As I told you, Antarctic and Arctic, they are facing the effects or impacts of climate change more than the terrestrial region. Because there is the rise in temperature at the 0 0.7 degree centigrade per year. So the scientist Rick, he told that the day will come and come when the oxygen will, uh, when the ocean will perish in hunger. So this is only the one side of the coin. Come to the next side of the coin. That is temperature in this Arctic region that I have mentioned. And these lives, these are exist within the permafrost, which has been created at least 80 lakh years old or more. This is not the new situation which has appeared here. But I can firmly and finally I can say that we have seen and we can see the effects of COVID-19 and climate change. But simultaneously it is teaching us that we are as strong as the weakest link when the climate change is looking glamorously towards the humankind. So I will say for the greatest good, for the greatest number of people, for the longest time, is the sustainability. And man has the power that man can foresee, man can forestall, man can destroy itself. So thank you. Thank you everybody for giving me this opportunity and to listen to me. I am ever debted, indebted to all of you that you have given me this opportunity to share some knowledge with you, even with the big scientist before us. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir for your enlightening and holistic lecture. Thank you. Actually, I think that uh, we are the member of a largest and particularly noisy family. Yes. And just about six million years ago, a single ape has two daughters. One became the <laughs> ancestor of all the oh. and other is our own grandmother.
Yes. And it's, it's very surprising that this noisy family is threatening the survival of every life form, including yes. our own kind, sir. And we are extracting every drop of this resource every day, every second, and endangering our future. Uh, about hundreds of millions years ago, you, uh, you, you can... Yes, I have it. mentioned it. Yes, that... Uh, Six or seven different kind of human beings walked together in the Siberia. Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happened to them now, and what are we becoming? Super God, super humans? No, I don't no, 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 no. If you say thou, what will be the future human being? That the yeah. human Homo sapiens sapiens to become yeah. the human Homo futurist. Homo, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's and what you should right. see, their head will not be like just like that without here and the triangular in shape their arms will be less than what we measure that yeah. uh, the three times of our body that will not be there and they will be breathing the oxygen from their boxes <laughs> <Particularly, laughs> yes, sir. absolutely right sir so thank you once again sir to give us this reality check thank you sir so now this session is open for interaction and i would like to Request everyone, if you have any queries, uh, you can please discuss and with When you are Dr. talking Gosh. about the apps, now these apps <laughs> are uh, endangered. Yes, they are endangered. Mm -hmm. Everything we are we are forcing mm -hmm. them to become endangered. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, once upon a time, there are only four types of apps: huh? gorilla, simpanji, baboons, and the orangutans. Yes. <laughs> and only right now, there are these are the uh, Africa and Southeast uh, uh, at that stage once. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, so, mm. so uh, any any questions from any participant? At least my dear students. Gosh, uh, yes, sir. Apurvo, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, a very good informative lecture uh, delivered by you. <laughs> yeah. The, I have been enriched with your informations that is especially coastal biodiversity yes. marine diversity and lastly you have pointed out the man is the power for protection for destroying for the, all this mm -hmm. and you have also maintained the conservation of horse sports etc very good very good informative and thank you and once again i am uh, i like to say, say that i am today I have joined because uh, of these two persons, the well-known persons of Guru Varnathan Bhus and my student. <laughs> ah, yes, sir. I am uh, your Dr. student. Sir, I am also uh, your was, student. Uh, you huh? were my student during the period. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, at Mr. Bharati, uh, you, are, you stood first class first during this, that period, 1974 and 75, yes. when I was there. Uh, as a teacher, and I'm proud of uh, both of you. Uh, Sudhain Mondal stood first in my master's degree when I was a teacher. Professor yeah. Mondal is unparalleled. Yes. We cannot touch him. We can only get his essence. No, 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 we no. Can only get congratulations, Apurva. Congratulations, Sudhain I heard very much uh, your success also, <laughs> the Apurva Ratan success. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Shamita. Bhalo thakbe. Bhalo thakbe. Tum abhi jaan. Bhalo thakbe. Abhurvo. Bhalo thakbe. Khub bhale bolche. Excellent. Excellent. Tum abhi jaan. 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 Global flavor. Khub bhale. Tum abhi jaan. Tum abhi jaan. Tum abhi jaan. Bhalo thakbe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Apurva Kumar lecture on it in Padishulam after a long time. I am very happy. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. The whole world, Apurva, international flavor. Fantastic. Yes, yes. Very good delivery. Go on, go on. There is a question in the chat box for Professor Ghosh. Yes. From Mr. Shubhradip Chakraborty. Is there any specific time period for the evolution of future human? Obviously, you see that uh, all you know that from the divergent mode of evolution, starting from reptiles, we have appeared 
in that point of view that is the i can show you that it is not with me right now but the point of evolution it is always in terms of epoch or era so there is some points where you will see that in one hand the birds appeared in this way and the mammals appeared in this way so obviously the different periods or era and if you want to distinguish in, into different epoch that is a range obviously there is a range i cannot uh, particularly mention the date but the time frame either in terms of billion years that can be just like uh, dr mondol has told you that the 3.5 billion years ago the first blue green algae appeared in this earth okay it's a time frame 3.5 to 3.85 million years ago so this time frame is there of the human evolution but there are so many evidences which have ever been buried into the uh, uh, permafrost some of them we have been able to explore as a result of that we can calculate that the australopithecus appeared sometimes in 30000 or 40000 years ago so this is the time frame okay sir oh thank you thank you so much sir uh, so we will move i guess there is no more questions till now uh, then i will move to the next session and our next session is a photography competition photography actually is the art of making memorable tangible memories tangible over the past few weeks we have received quite a lot number of amazing and wonderful photograph that paved a new path to look deep into the astroing world lenses so to start with we will go through all the entries as a slight presentation and finally our honorable judge dr shubhamoy chongdar will announce the winner for each category i would like to request mr onish bhattacharya assistant professor from department of botany to kindly share the slide presentation mr onish Hi. bhattacharya can you hear me yes professor no, professor re professor re professor sundipan re yes yes sir please uh, can i leave the platform for yeah yes sir you can okay, okay. so uh, every respect to my uh, expected teacher professor mondol professor chat and very uh, impressive um, this webinar organized by the department of botany geology and conservation biology and my great great brother devnath okay pincel sir i say goodbye because of my uh, another assignment to go to department okay please excuse me thank you thank you sir thank, thank you so much thank you sir Mr. Anish Bhattacharya, can you please share the yes. slide? Yes. 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 Thank you, Dr. Ray, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it's really a great pleasure, uh, pleasure to present the photographs we have received from various uh, corners of our state as well as our country. And guess what? Uh, that we received many beautiful pictures from uh, the three uh, set three sections, as Dr. Ray said, uh, that landscape section, uh, nature, and man-animal conflict. Uh, so we have received a uh, total 16 photos for landscape section 29 for nature section and three photos from man animal conflict section uh, so the participants who have shared their creativities are uh, mr ognidutti haldar for landscape nature and man animal conflict uh, for landscape and nature both section mr Om omit sarkar mr apurva gorai ms chandrani ghosh mr animesh karmakar Ms. Moena Kundu, Ms. Shreyoshi Shen Sharma, Mr. Devan Gayan, Mr. Shapratik Dev Borma, Ms. Uh, Deepanita Chakraborty, Dr. Kuntal Narayan Choudhury, Ms. Sudipta Seth, and Mr. Rajdeep Shaw for landscape, nature, and man-animal conflict, Dr. Kumaresh Pal for nature and man-animal conflict, uh, and for nature, well, those who have submitted their pictures are uh, Dr. Alakananda Mojumdar, Ms. Ongita Mahanti, Ms. Anushka Chakraborty, Mr. Ashish Ojha, Mr. Chittoranjan Noshkar, Mr. Kushal Mistri, Mr. Prithiraj Haldar, Ms. 
সঞ্চারী সরকার মিস সৌমিতা মাঝি মিস সুদেশনা সেন মিস্টার সুবোদীপ মুখার্জি মিস আচল ইয়াদব মিস্টার সুবোদীপ দাস মিস্টার শেখ জামসাদ মিস ইফসিতা গিরি অ্যান্ড ফর ল্যান্ডস্কেপ দোজ আর মিস্টার পল্লব মাল্লিক মিস রিমি সিং মিস মিস্টার শুভেন্দু ঘোষ সো as we have seen that there are many people who have participated and show their love for nature and biodiversity so whatever the result is will be every participants are winner for us so uh, without any delay i, I will start the uh, presentation uh, is it visible is it vis is the screen visible yeah, yeah, it's coming yes it's visible only okay <laughs> thank you thank you okay thank you mr anish bhattacharya seriously i don't have any word to appreciate the talent and just we have witnessed to the eyes of our amazing photographers now i would like to request again mr bhattacharya anish bhattacharya department of botany to kindly introduce our judge for the photography competition thank you dr ray uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce the eminent judge dr shuhama chongdar who have received uh, his phd and master of technology degrees in computer science and engineering uh, from uh, csc from national institute of technology durgapur india in 2011 and 2008 respectively currently he is an assistant professor having 20 years of teaching experience in department of csc at nit durgapur west bengal india his re area of research is information security uh steganography water marking computational aesthetics and applications of machine learning in field of computer vision 
He has presented his papers in several international conferences at USA, China, Egypt, Malaysia, and India. He has published more than 50 research papers in reputed journals and international conferences. His Google Scholar citation is more than 550 with H index 13 and I10 index 19. He has served as technical program committee member in several conferences and also served as reviewer of several renowned journals including IEEE transactions. He has served as a resource person in several workshops or, in, or invited lectures or training and learning programs. He has presented several sessions on data security, steganography, machine learning, deep learning and wildlife photography. So it is really an unique thing that though he belongs to hardcore engineering subject background, still he has lot of love for photography, moreover for biodiversity and natural life forms. This clearly shows that you don't need to be a biology student to love nature and loving biodiversity. It's not and loving bio, biodiversity is not restricted to biological science. Thank you, Dr. Ray. Now I will request Dr. Shubhama Chongdar to please announce the winner. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the nice uh, presentation about me. So I have uh, looked and also checked all the photographs very carefully. The first of uh, the things that I, I want to share that the participation is more important than getting a prize and a recognition. Okay. So uh, those who have part participated by sending the photographs, I really appreciate their energy and uh, wish to uh, do something creative. Uh, it was really a tough because most of the photographs are uh, of the same uh, uh, rank, okay? But obviously you have to give a judgment. So that's why I have chosen. I will try to uh, give you a little uh, uh, brief discussions or points. That's why this photograph has been chosen for uh, getting the rank, okay? So first in uh, the category of landscape, uh, I want to say that the first uh, rank is for Mr. Kuntal Narayan Choudhury. So those who have noticed the photograph with some patterns and lines, actually it is a muddy field or, or the uh, poppy field or uh, uh, some, some kinds of fields are there, where you will get a pattern and the light that is uh, on the photograph is really very nice and it, it looks, it, it's uh, aesthetic sense is very good. So that's why uh, it has been given the first. Next in the landscape section, Mr. Rajdeep Shaw has got the second <coughs> rank because uh, he has used the primary colors, red, green and blue, which is really uh, looking very nice uh, in the photograph. Whenever you see a very uh, good photograph, actually we try to find the, the color or uses of the colors. So here we have found, I have checked that the RGB is present and that's why I have selected this as the second one. The third one is Chandrani Ghosh. Uh, she has tried to capture uh, the, the uh, snow on the rock. So it has given, though it is a color photograph, but the, the, the feelings that I have received is a black and white, which is really looking nice. So that way I have selected uh, Ms. Chandrani Ghosh as the third ranker here in the case of landscape. So later you can also check the photographs and you can check that whether uh, these are uh, with the correct names or not. Okay, in the nature section, I have found a lot of uh, good photographs, but the thing is that obviously uh, uh, we are not, all of we are not aware about that. Nature means there should not be any human created uh, elements in the photograph. 
so there are some differences in nature you can use the human created uh, sorry in in landscape you can use the human created uh, elements or something but in case of nature there should not be any items which is created artificially artificially means by human beings or some others okay so <clears throat> some of the photographs will be discarded uh, by following this rule after that i have found the first rank as devayan gayan uh, this is due to the creature that uh, he has found uh, is a green snake okay uh, i don't know the actual name so you you might be better uh, ever about the name so it is a green snake under the green background which is very tough to find and nature photography is not only to give you the aesthetic sense only so here we are always trying to dig the nature to find out he, its creature beautiful creature so in that way finding the elements or finding the object is a very uh, 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 what we can say actually we give the priorities to that okay so in that uh, i have selected that photograph as the first one and devas is uh, sorry devayan gayan is the first ranker under nature then mr kumares pal he has captured a very nice moment where the bee eaters are sharing uh, one uh, grasshopper or something so uh, this is really very nice photograph and then third one uh, goes to uh, jointly by two person one is miss sanchari sarkar because in her photograph uh, uh, we are getting the conservation of nature that uh, one uh, bird is taking the food uh, like uh, frog and if you check the photograph you will find that the frog is uh, just the action of the frog is that nothing to do so here uh, the moment is that someone's life is someone's death okay so but now you can ask that why is the uh, the photograph is having too much of weightage then why it has got third prize because it could have been a little bit sharper so uh, the it has been a little blurred and obviously along with the elements we need the quality also so that's why i have selected this as the third one and mr onimesh karmakar is the jointly third uh, though in the nature photography lot of editing is not um, uh, permissible but still the color that he has tried to uh, take in the uh, evening or in the dawn so that's why i have chosen uh, mr onimesh karmakar as the joint third winner in the under the nature section and under the conflict human animal conflict section uh there were only three photographs but uh, uh, among these three photographs two are discarded because these are not at all under this topic one was only a butterfly and another was in a zoo so zoo photography is not uh, uh, comes under the uh, human animal conflict okay so there was only one left and this photograph is really beautiful if you check it thoroughly you will find that number of people are there and a paradise fly catcher is feeding uh, its uh, babies okay so it is a really uh, nice photograph so as per my choice i have selected all these okay so thank you very much to the uh, committee members coordinators and the principal of the institute for giving me the chance to do that not only that i have got the chance to see so many good photographs for this occasion thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much for your time and presence uh, a heartfelt congratulations to all the una winner and thank you all for the participation in the competition and now to all the registered participant for this webinar Uh, we are sharing a feedback link in the chat box please uh, go to the chat box and click on the link and after submitting the feedback form as soon as possible you will going to get the participation certificate immediately we will send the award certificate to all the winners of the photographic competition in due course through mail now finally we have reached to our last phase of this webinar 
and i would like to request our respected convener dr moitri chakraborty from department of conservation biology to deliver the vote of thanks for the webinar uh thank you sandeepan uh so we have come to the end of this uh, webinar come photographic competition uh good afternoon to one and all who have joined here on this platform uh for this one day national webinar towards sustainable development connecting lives through interactions and lenses uh in order to commemorate the international day of biological diversity on 22nd may on behalf of durgapur government college and its internal entire fraternity and the organizing committee I feel immense pleasure to take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks. We express our sincere gratitude to our respected principal, Durgapur Government College and chief patron of this webinar, Dr. Devnath Palit, for his constant encouragement and extending every possible help to organize this event and to spare some time from his schedule to grace this occasion. We extend our heartfelt thanks to our respected speakers of the day, Professor Shudendu Mundol and Professor Apurvatan Ghosh, for accepting our invitation and also to spare some of their busy time to be here with us. They have enriched enriched us with their excellent presentation and deliberation. We are really grateful to them. We also extend our heartfelt thanks to our respected judge. for the photographic competition dr shomoy chondar for accepting our invitation and also to announce the names of those who have won the competition we are extremely thankful to all the respected members of the national advisory board of this webinar we have who have been with us and gave us full support and encouragement to conduct this program we are also thankful to dr abhijit mondol coordinator of iqac and dr shopan kumar ghosh secretary teachers council the gopur government college who have provided their constant support and encouragement to organize this webinar we are also extremely thankful to all the participants students and dignitaries without whom this webinar would not have been a success i also thank all the teachers and non teaching staff of the gopur government college for their continuous support and i sincerely thank all the members of the organizing committee who have worked day and night to uh, make this webinar a grand success once again i thank one and all wholeheartedly and lastly i would like to say that all participants must fill up the feedback form which will be provided in the chat box in order to get the e certificates it will be provided immediately to the participants and also i would like to say that those who have won the competition a separate certificate uh, e certificate will be provided to them and we will also like to provide a small token of appreciation at a particular date if they could uh, come to our college and collect the same so we will uh, please uh, fill up the form and be with us in our future endeavors thank you so much thank you madam uh, this concludes this webinar i must express thank to the team who has helped with staging this webinar and all our participants and guests we appreciate you being here thank you thank you all